When the average person thinks about tanks, the first image in their mind probably isn't of a medium tank. They probably think of a heavy tank like the Tiger. It's not hard to see why. Heavies embody the common understanding of tanks. Big metal boxes with thick armor and big guns. Even among tank enthusiasts, heavy tanks are some of the most popular. When you consider how long heavies were in vogue, how relatively short that time frame was, it's kind of funny to think about. After the 1950s, they pretty much went extinct, and some of you guys were asking me to talk about why. It seems useful to have a breakthrough vehicle, right? Something to take enemy defenses head on. So why did they disappear? I'm sure a lot of you are already writing comments saying heat, and that was indeed a huge factor, but it certainly wasn't the only one. To start out with, let's do a recap of heavy tank history. During the First World War, there were a few tanks that could be considered heavies, namely vehicles like the Mark IV and saint chamond They were used as you would expect. They were typically concentrated in one area. There they would assault enemy lines directly, carving a path for the infantry. Unfortunately, for the majority of the war, they didn't impact battles all that much. The tanks had a definitive effect on morale, but they were fairly easy to knock out. That is, if they didn't knock themselves out first. It should probably go without saying, but these tanks were horrendously unreliable. They also had a tendency to get stuck in shell craters and such. But as technology improved and experience was gained, tanks gradually became more numerous and useful. Moving into the interwar period, the three main tank classes we know begin to really take shape. Heavy tanks begin to focus more on armor and firepower, with most countries favoring multi-turreted designs. An example would be the T-35. Whereas mediums and lights would now focus on recon and marauding, heavies were still being designed for more or less the same role, tackling enemy defenses head-on. It was also recognized that they'd be fighting tanks often, so many incorporated both howitzers and anti-tank guns. Though they were still unreliable and unwieldy, this was more or less the start of the golden age for heavy tanks. Once the Second World War kicked off, heavy tanks were rapidly refined. Most importantly, their clumsy multi-turret layouts were replaced with single turrets. Instead of simply choosing the best anti-tank gun, most nations chose guns that could work against fortifications as well. They still weren't very reliable, but they were improved, to the point they could do more than just breakthrough. They could maraud like medium tanks, though they weren't really suited for it. This was more or less the peak for heavy tanks. They were protected from the majority of anti-tank weapons, and had a large impact on the battlefield. They wouldn't go unchallenged, though. To counter heavy tanks, lugging around a giant anti-tank gun wasn't always viable. For the US Army, they developed powerful HVAP rounds, also known as APCR. Britain began pumping out APDS, armor-piercing discarding Sabo. And of course, pretty much every nation was developing stronger-shaped charge rounds, also known as high-explosive anti-tank or HEAT. These were used on infantry anti-tank weapons, since their penetration didn't come from velocity. As such, you could launch them using rockets or a recoilless rifle, options that made them man-portable. These alone didn't spell the end for the heavy tank, though. Vehicles like the M103, Conqueror, and IS-3 were still being made, though the first two weren't really designed for breakthroughs. Their main goal was to destroy Soviet heavy tanks. At that point, the Soviets were the only nation to retain heavy breakthrough tanks. That would end with the T-10, though. Premier Khrushchev was fundamentally opposed to heavy tanks, and ordered that their development be halted immediately. This was mostly because he favored ATGM carriers, but it wasn't exactly a bad decision. Yes, producing a heavy tank that could withstand modern weapons wasn't tenable, but there were other factors as well. Because of advances in combined arms warfare, heavy tanks were redundant. Considering the lauded survivability onion, rolling directly into the enemy isn't the best move. Using new technologies like guided bombs, attack helicopters, and main battle tanks, you could engage the enemy without having to take a ton of damage. Producing a heavy tank with composites wouldn't be ideal either. Composites save on weight, but they take up much more volume. A modern heavy tank would be huge. Accounting for things like tunnel clearance, it would be incredibly difficult to move. Of course, it would also be much more expensive. So hypothetically, instead of getting two flexible MBTs, you buy one heavy tank, and it's only marginally better in one specific role. And besides, modern MBTs have found much more efficient ways to protect their sides, such as ERA. Anyway, I think that covers most bases. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you on the next one.